right so uh, good evening everyone and uh, uh, so basically i am i am here on a vacation and uh, you know our, our group of friends decided that we are going to have a reunion so i thought this is the best opportunity to introduce you to someone uh, who has done phd abroad uh, who is doing phd abroad and uh, you know get some information out of her so basically what 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 i want to tell you is that even i have some information but i thought it will be perfect if it, if i can actually introduce you to someone who is who has been practically there so this is my friend over here bhumika and she is doing a phd in in, in um, this texas university and uh, so uh, so just let me just ask some of the questions that you guys posted in the comment section to her hi guys so hi bhumika <laughs> hi so could you just uh, tell the viewers that uh, what is the experience like what is the basic main difference why should people go abroad <laughs> I mean, uh, for PhD. Um. Okay. So, uh, even in India, the PhD is for five years, minimum five years, and in abroad, it's for five years if you're doing it from Canada or from uh, America. But if you're going for Germany, it's for three years. Uh, that's the first difference that comes to my mind. And the research over there is very focused, but at the same time, it does have a lot of you know you have to go through a lot of course coursework and everything because in india if you are doing phd you have like 6 or 8 months of coursework but if you are doing it abroad you have to go for like a, a year and a half of coursework so that's very intensive in america and canada like i can only say about that because i i know that procedure um that's what the major difference is <clears throat> otherwise it's just an experience to go abroad and you know you learn a lot of new things you learn a lot about different cultures and can you give an example of what difference main one drastic difference that you could find between the work culture in india especially in mm. abroad um i really don't want to demean anyone but you know once you have a idea it's very easy to manifest that idea into a product or into something that you want to see like into a result abroad a but yeah but in india it takes a long long time and i won't blame uh, professors or anybody for that like it's just the system that takes a lot of time in you know manifest manifesting an idea but abroad once you have a idea it's very easy to you know um make it work so that's what i feel that it's faster okay that way but I do feel that um, Indian students are far far more talented than students abroad. Okay, and the one thing that they like, there's one query that even I want to ask you is that uh, people say that the instrumentation abroad is much much better, and that's why you are able to work faster. And <coughs> the the kind of the kind of research you can do abroad in five years, you cannot even think of doing that in ten years. Is okay. that true? Um. it really depends on what kind of institute or what kind of university you are working in like if you go to iits or top most universities in india they have a lot of good instrumentation with them but if you are like like even in um, america you get like most of the instruments that you get here some universities definitely like if you go to ivy league they have everything that you want but it really depends on the institution um that's what really matters okay and uh, no like basically what i want to ask is like once you were telling me that there were some studies uh, there is one research group which is actually doing studies on you know uh, reaction mechanisms and uh, in fact if i if, if i am correct one of your guide also got a paper uh, about re, uh, re, uh, about uh, revisiting uh, this nucleophilic reactions like what is the there is some kind of drawback with the mechanism that we have with the nucleophilic reactions so uh, like the i'm talking about that like how do they do the studies like there has to be some difference because i don't know any research group in india as such which is working on reaction mechanisms uh, i think people there are more open to ideas like here when you're working in a lab you're actually working on a particular thing that your guide told you about and you're just working on that you don't have your own ideas but abroad um first of all i don't think so guides would really you know ask you to do something they would just ask you what your major interest is and i know a lot of professors in india do that too now like they've started doing it so it really depends on um your guide and if your idea resonates with your guide's idea he would do everything and anything to make it happen if he thinks it's worth it but in india you do get a lot of resistance when you have an idea and you want to really make it work you have to go through a lot of resistance sometimes 
so it's really subjective um but i think if you have the passion and you really want to do it it's not difficult even in india but yeah it takes time here okay and since uh, like this question is personally my favorite as well and many of you might be wondering because in my masters i while away all my time doing nothing and preparing for nothing while she uh, like she's my batchmate so i know that she was continuously balancing between her masters she was getting good good percentage in her masters as well as she was doing really well studying for gre which is the basic requirement for going to us at least so how to balance between your masters and your gre okay so um the first thing that you need to know about uh, applying for phd abroad is that um you have to give gre and you have to have your masters degree with you only then you can apply uh, and TOEFL like if you have done a btech course or a four year degree program then you can definitely go and give gre but uh, like it's the eligibility criteria for gre you have to have your masters and um you have to give gre and toefl both uh, you can give ielts too like if you have some problem but i would say that toefl is more like for academics like if you're going for studying purpose you should give toefl if you're going there for work or some other visiting like for some other work you can give ielts so you have to give gre you have to give toefl and then you have to have a good percentage um it really doesn't matter like they don't have a set criteria that they would select you if you have very high percentage and you don't have a good score in gre what matters is that they would look up for the overall profile like you should have a very good profile a very strong profile so in case you are in your masters and you want to apply for a phd abroad i would really say that you know start working on your profile building because that's what really helps um you can go for a lot of um like go for a lot of projects work with a lot of professors have recommendations that would really really help a lot and just build up your profile because you really don't know what they would you know pick you on like you might have average profile but if there's something that really stands out maybe you have an excellent research hand they would just pick you up so just work on your profile building if you are in your bachelor's or in your masters but um after masters of course you have to give gre and toefl and then you have to have recommendations and all of that sort but how to balance between your gre and your masters that's the main question <laughs> yeah i know like i how did, did you like uh, go about it yeah i did try my best to manage but obviously it's not easy like i'm not saying even if you go to some you know agent travel agent or someone nobody takes up the phd program because like they would have students like they would say that yeah we can get you admitted in masters program but they won't guarantee for phd actually nobody takes the case of a phd because uh, the admittance like the admit uh, percentage is just 2% so uh, you really have to apply all by yourself nobody is going to help you there and for managing um just try to work like start working at least 11 months before 11 or 12 months before you actually want to apply and um like when you have your exams obviously you can't do that but start writing your statement of purpose it's going to take a lot of time and start talking to students who are already abroad there are a lot of um facebook pages um indian associations and all of that sort that those students really help you like you can write an email to them and they would really help like what they want like they know they are in the university so they can actually help you um and for managing uh, you really have to have the patience and time so don't just go for it like the last moment you know like the next month you have your deadline and you're starting today it's not going to help it really takes a lot of persistence so that's what really matters uh, like you should just take your time and do it so i would say like the perfect time is at least 11 or 10 months just start making up your mind that you want to apply abroad okay. and do it in holidays or something like gre would take one one and a half month of preparation and for application and all it just need one month so generally you would say above 300 is a good uh, gre score yeah. decent decent gre score yeah. right it's a like it's an acceptable gre yeah. score and, and in toefl above 100 right yeah 90 to 100, 90 to 100. like if you get above 100 it's really good if it's in between 90 and 100 then it's a decent score all right and uh, one last question that is in fact the most important one is that uh, out of your uh, recommendations mm-hmm. your statement of purpose your academics your research work that 
consists of your uh, uh, research papers if you're having research papers yeah. and, your GRE, and, you and, your, and your research and your GRE paper. score how yeah. will you rate these five things from top to like the, according to you I'm not saying okay. it might work for some other university but what do you in your in your perspective feel which carries the top priority uh, I'll just repeat again SOP statement of purpose that is your GRE score or and TOEFL score your academics your research uh, experience and your recommendations okay so I think uh, the most important is the GRE and TOEFL score because if you don't know their language they can't really judge you and for GRE if you are going for chemistry um, you don't need a very high score on quantitative uh, you just need a decent score and for verbal um, try to score more in verbal like you should have a really good English because they want they expect you to write papers and everything so you should have a good command on English but if you don't have a very good command on quantitative which is maths it's fine so I think GRE and TOEFL are very important for you know like if you have a high score you have high probability of getting admission and then obviously your master's degree and your bachelor's degree I don't say like you have to be a topper or something but Make sure you have at least A grade, like first division, that's like mandatory. Um, and then recommendations also do matter. Uh, what was the next? Uh, yeah, the statement of purpose I think is very, very important. It can make or break your whole admission scenario because that's how they would know you. Like they don't know you personally and the statement of purpose reflects what kind of a person you are and how well you can actually gel up with you know working with other team members and everything so i think statement of purpose is also very very important and i think you should take a lot of time in writing it and make sure you ask other people to edit it for you because that's very very important and these guys really take it really you know seriously so i think that's what it is okay and research papers as well yeah um if you have a good research papers, you have high probability of getting admission. But um, it's not that important. But yeah, obviously they're not expecting like they don't expect you to have research exposure in masters generally. So if you have a research paper, that's just the, an evidence that okay you've worked hard and you already know how to work. You have a scientific aptitude, so you can do you know so. There's a high probability that you would get admission, but that's not compulsory. I didn't have a um, research paper in master's, so it's not, not at all compulsory. But if you have it, you obviously have a upper hand. Right. And uh, so lastly, I would just uh, like you to see these are the important points. Like research paper is a bonus, right? Yeah. yeah. If you have that, it's really good. It will help boost your profile, but that is not mandatory. Yeah. So I'll just ask her, uh, like, uh, you, you know, what was your general profile so that... You, you know students can also aim and if uh, they have a similar profile they could be confident that they could also you know may, uh, do well in uh, um i don't th really think so like it really depends on what kind of university you're applying to what kind of situation it is um you can't really match anyone because i know people who had a very high score and they just could not get into a university so i think just yeah that's a good point like i think the best thing to do is do not compare it's really it's not in your hands just do your best and try to project as best as you can like they should really know you and they should have a feeling that okay i should take this guy because this guy or this girl is really good in science and she can do really well for the university so just don't compare, don't listen to anyone. Even if you have a low score in GRE or even if you didn't do very, very great in your master's, that's fine. Just apply because you really don't know. Maybe they're looking for just a sincere person. Maybe they're just looking for someone who is hardworking and you are. Like your guide said or your professor said that this guy is hardworking but she did not do well in master's. That's fine. They might just pick you up. So it's not like you don't have a cutoff okay. basically. Like... You, it's not like you have to score fifty percent so that you would get admission. It's not like a cut up thing. You really don't know what they're gonna pick up. So the best thing is do not compare to anyone. Just do your best and apply. Right and uh, like is the course or whatever like a material is required for GR is it available online <coughs> for free? Like can you access uh, so this uh, material for free? Um yes you can actually. So there are a lot of sites, there's mabush.com and there, there are a lot of sites for GRE that you can go ahead for. 
um, but if you're doing your masters and you really don't have like if you're on a time crunch you can go for coaching okay. yeah but coaching is not mandatory right? yeah no it's not mandatory yeah. I did go for coaching because I was doing my masters and I had a lot of stuff going on and I was even working in lab so I did get coaching but um, it's not compulsory definitely not Right. Um, you can, uh, um, but one thing for GRE that I would recommend is go for the test that they have. Like ETS gives the it's ETS is actually the organization that uh, makes the GRE test. So make sure you go through that website or just buy the GRE official guide and go through it once and give the model test papers for that one because that's very very close to the actual GRE. All right. So I had a couple of more questions, but my friend Kanika, she's holding the <laughs> camera and she's getting really yeah, tired. I know. So I, I'll ask her those questions and get back to you. So thank you so much for watching and thank you so much Bhumika for answering these questions. Yeah. And yeah, thank Bye. you. Bye.